Hey everyone, welcome to my new video. Today I want to talk a little bit about Blender Terrains and especially about the thing that you might be missing when you're trying to create your Blender environments, the missing link that will make everything five times, maybe 10 times better, and that's displacement. And if you never use displacement in Blender, it just might be the thing that you need to elevate your designs. And again, this is not a step-by-step -step tutorial, so you don't need to be in front of your PC or Blender to actually enjoy the content. And if you enjoy it please leave that like it will really help me and if you're new around here and want to see more videos like this hit that subscribe now without further ado let's jump into blender so let's say i would want to create a ground plane here um so first let me delete uh, some of the default stuff here and let's add a plane and i'll make this larger like 10 times or something like that so first of all i will need some texture and there are a lot of great textures on polyhaven.com. Um, you can find the link to this one in the description. So you can just go ahead and download this or choose whatever um, texture you like here. I've chosen 4K texture. And now I basically just need to bring the textures in on our ground plane. So I will switch here to shader and create a new material here. And now I can just drag and drop these textures that I unzipped. Um, from the download file um, to our shader editor and now we have these four different maps here so the diffuse is for the color so you can just plug that here um, right away we can leave the displacement that will be the important one for later and here we'll just create a normal map and plug it to normal and the roughness of course and I'll switch this to non-color and same for the normal and here as well so this is the basic setup and now if we preview this um, this is what you should get you have your texture and it kind of looks like it has some structure because we are using normal map if you disconnect the normal map you would see that this is basically completely flat there's basically nothing providing a height information. With the normal map, you can see this micro displacement happening there. Let me do this once again here. But that's not enough. If you go at an angle like this, now you can clearly see that these boulders are basically looking just like painted on the ground. Um, and there's a way how to bring them up, how to bring them into 3D, and that's the displacement. Um, and you can see here in the material output, we have a special displacement plug and that's basically something that we need to modify uh, the geometry on a shader level so so this is basically the first method you can do displacement on a shader level and now with the latest blender versions you are basically able to do this um, both in EV and cycles there's no need to you know switch between those for displacement which is amazing um, that's like a huge deal when it comes to like real-time EV rendering and the way you would set up this is basically you just bring displacement node into the mix here and you plug your color information from the displacement map um, if you want to see how this looks um, this is the height map information from the displacement so you can see the black colors are lower and the white colors are higher up in the 3d space so when you plug this into the height information and then you plug your displacement it should start working let me just connect it here uh, but we still don't see any displacement uh, first of all we need to activate this on a material level so first step you need to bring the texture in add displacement node and connect it to your displacement now in the material settings there's an option for displacement and you can switch this from bump to displacement and that will basically enable the behavior but here we still don't see any displacement happening even though if you look from the side you can see like a parallax effect where uh, the geometry is right here but the surface is appearing to be underneath and if you increase the scale of the displacement this will become even more apparent so the displacement is definitely working but it's not distorting our surface based on the texture and that's simply because we don't have any geometry so any displacement whether it's on a shader level or on the modifier level will require 
a geometry to work with. So you definitely need to subdivide. And I wanted to set it up like this. So now you can see if I tap into the edit node and subdivide this, you immediately see the changes in the geometry. You now see a little bit of a bump happening here. And now if we subdivide this even further, there'll be more and more of that stuff happening here. Let me do like five or six subdivisions here. And now this is quite apparent that the displacement is working and we can reduce the scale, of course. So now you will see it's happening where it's supposed to, but it's not very detailed. And that's simply because um, the geometry is not dense enough. So the displacement really relies on a dense geometry, so it can be quite demanding on hardware. And here I wanted to mention two methods we can basically subdivide our our object first is basically just going in and subdivide this manually like I did right here uh, on the mesh level and the second one will be to use subdivision modifier but even then um, we can use two versions of subdivision surface modifier if you add the regular one here we can see this becoming much much detailed but it's really dense across the board if we disable optimal display and look at the mesh this is the geometry now if you go to level three even four this will be really really dense but again it can be really demanding and there's another way how to add subdivision modifier if we go to the render settings but please uh, keep in mind that this will work only in cycles if we switch to the cycles render and i will enable gpu here and gpu for the denoising um, here you can switch to experimental features and then in the modifiers when you add the subdivision surface it will be the experimental one where you are able to enable adaptive subdivision and here basically you can increase levels of subdivision but it will not happen in a constant way so basically the further you're away if we now go to the rendered preview and i think we need some lights here so let me just drop in some hdri maybe something like this Okay, this is updated so now you can see on four levels it shows a really dense mesh it will get less and less subdivided further it goes from the camera because there you don't need um, that much of a resolution of course so this will make it much more performant um, for uh, larger scenes for example where you need a larger terrain but still need um, this kind of detailed displacement so let me just remove this and I will go back to standard subdivision settings and subdivide is using standard subdivision surface modifier with let's say three levels of subdivision or four and now if we preview this we get the same result and let me just rotate this HDRI so as you can see the light reacts with the displaced um, geometry and you really get this nice ground surface that's really detailed but the moment you switch to the solid view you basically only see the flat plane there's no geometry happening at all and uh, this is basically the problem with the shader level um, displacement um, if you use only the material texture displacement like here the moment you need to interact somehow with your surface um, you have a problem and you need a different approach and here another thing comes into place and that's displacement on a modifier level which is what i want to show you here but before i proceed i want to show you why this can be an issue so let's say i want to add a grass on this kind of terrain so let me go back to the material preview here i will use an add-on for this um, with pre-made presets for grass so we can really do this quickly so yeah, let's say some kind of meadow here. So let's create a particle system with the grass. And now the add-on replaced my texture. So I need to go into the material settings and switch back to our material with the displacement. So you can see we have that displacement in place, but the grass, if you look from the side here, is not copying the displacement at all. It basically just works on the flat plane because that's the geometry the particle system is working with there are of course other reasons why you might want to do this this way um, so if i now disable the particle system and let's say i just want to create a few bumps here and there um, to have a nice terrain 
and let's say we want to add a car that will drive over this terrain. So let me just copy paste the vehicle here. And this is the vehicle that's part of my upcoming um, car animation course. And speaking of courses, if you're new to Blender and you want to learn as fast as possible with step-by-step -step detailed instructions, be sure to check out my courses. I carefully designed them to take you from beginner skills through low poly illustration all the way to full character illustration, textured environments, even a little bit of sculpting, hard surface modeling. So if you're interested, please check out the link in the description. Now, I'm just using this car rig to demonstrate um, how this modifier level displacement might be useful. So let me just go into the pose mode here and I will go ahead and enable some ground snapping. Okay, so now we are able to move the car, you know, along the bumps of the surface. But you can see it only copies um, these large bumps here. So if we go into the material preview, you can see there's a lot of displacement happening there. But of course, our vehicle will ignore that and will go, you know, through the rocks and everything. Same as the grass ignores it. So here what we can do is to unplug the displacement node right there. We can basically just delete this whole setup there. And now we can go to the modifiers and we can add displacement modifiers. So let's go to the form and I'll add displacement and I will move it over the particle system. It's important for the particles to be after the displacement is happening. And I will create a new texture slot here and for the texture, I will go ahead and pick our displacement that we imported already before. You can already see there's some displacement happening, but um, it's not matching our texture. That's because we need to take care of mapping. So here, back in the modifier settings, you have some options for the texture coordinates. And now these are local and we can switch this to UV. And when we switch this to UV, it will start to behave exactly like here where these textures are mapped um, by default um, based on the UV map. Um, if you don't know the UV map by default for the plane um, looked like this. That's why I didn't UV unwrap this. So for example, if you have a custom terrain, then you might need to unwrap this first um, for this to work, of course. So let's go back to layout there. And now we have a working displacement. If you go to the solid view here, you will see that displacement is now clearly visible in the viewport. We can right click shade is smooth. And just like that from the texture, we have this nice terrain. So now if I go in and try to control the vehicle, you will see how the suspension is snapping. And now if we go ahead and enable our particle system, now this should snap on a real surface as you can see right there. So if we preview this in rendered view, now we have the real displacement happening. We have the particle system instantiating correctly over the displaced terrain, and we can create a little bit more complicated um, interactions like, you know, with the vehicle rigs or something like that. So that's basically it. that's all I had to say today about displacement and how useful it can be, whether you're just trying um, to make something look more detailed on a shader level or whether you're trying to accomplish some complex interactions with a detailed terrain, but you want to base that terrain displacement on a texture. So this is how you do it. And I really hope you enjoyed this one and that you learned something. Please let me know in the comments um, if there's something you would like to learn. Uh, for next video like this and again if you're new around here and want to see more hit that subscribe thank you all for watching and have a wonderful day